Okay, here's a here's a thing. Last night, this is a ra random ramble while I eat this delicious quesadilla. Um, Cause I didn't I didn't get my fish tacos. I ordered fish tacos and a quesadilla, and I only got I only got the quesadilla, but it's good. So. Um. Last night, I started watching Twin Peaks: The Return. Twi For those who don't know, <clears throat> there is a very famous television show called Twin Peaks, made by David Lynch, uh, and Mark Frost, and a lot of other people in the second season. So many different people, I can't remember all their names. Twin Peaks was a really well liked TV show. Um, that is, it's, it's, it's an interesting experience. The, the show is incredible overall. Um, but the second season of Twin Peaks had a lot of issues with production and creative differences between the production team and David Lynch. To the degree that David Lynch literally took off and went to Japan instead of working on the show at one point. But, um, point is... Uh, Twin Peaks was a uh, beloved show by fans, and it was a it was a precious show to David Lynch. And even after season two had some shaky ground, uh, David Lynch managed to convince the fans to get together and basically petition for the right to make a movie called uh, Fire Walk with Me, which is in incredible okay fire walk with me is amazing okay it's incredible um maybe my favorite david lynch uh project at all incredible extremely terrifying but incredible then 25 years later they made season three of twin peaks 25 years later and an enormous percentage of the crew of the cast were able to come back for Twin Peaks The Return which I just started watching last night and wow is that an experience I can't even imagine there is uh, there is not a single thing that i know from my life that has been gone for 25 years and then came back okay i i i'm 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 you know 33 and so i've uh you know there could have been something but there's nothing that i know of in my life that was gone for 25 years and came back and is amazing, by the way. Twin Peaks The Return is st stunning so far. And um, the it has me thinking a lot about time and creative pursuits. You know? A lot. And I don't have anything super profound to say at this juncture outside of the fact that when I look back at the four plus years of streaming, um, I, and then I think about like, I, I, I think about like, I don't know how, what, where, what, can, what will I be able to do in 25 years time of working on various things? Will there someday be a demon mama, the return. Would anybody even remember me? You know? I can't even imagine that. To me, when I think about it, when I often feel like if I stop streaming for a week, that everyone will forget about me. And I know that's a brain disease to a certain degree, but not even to a certain degree. It is. Which is why I temper it and I try to, you know... But it's like, I, I, I go 25 years and not only did people come back for the show, but it actually brought, it, it made people rediscover the stuff that was there before. 
and I don't know. It's it's uh, thinking about all that is like it is wild to me. I've only been streaming for four years. Now, I've been doing creative pursuits for my entire life, my entire adult life especially, but for my entire life. Um, when I was younger, I always knew that I wanted to write and make other things like film or maybe, you know, at one point I was thinking about doing video games and at one point I was thinking about doing music. And I've done a little bit of all of them. Um, though I will say that I do not have a great talent for drawing and I don't currently seem to have much of a talent for programming or anything like that. So I don't know if those are in the books for me. But uh, writing especially and filmmaking, um, the first movie that I ever made was in sixth grade, maybe fifth grade. I think it was in sixth grade. It was the first movie that I ever made. I borrowed my, I asked my dad if we could borrow his um, Super 8 cassette um, camcorder. And we filmed this, me and Retcon, believe it or not. It's, I'm so happy you're here tonight, Retcon, seriously. Um, but me and Retcon, made this silly, extremely childish um, kids, you know, sh comedy show with our, um, with, with our own little sense of, uh, of uh, humor and whatever. There's all kinds of little sketches and stupid stuff. Um, and we made, I don't know, after that first movie, we made probably a dozen little short films, terrible, all edited in the camera. We didn't know how to use editing software uh, at all. I tried and I couldn't figure it out. Um, we couldn't figure any of that stuff out. So we just we just edited it in camera. We would rewind and then record over what we wanted to change if we did anything at all. We would fast forward if there was a mistake, you know, when we showed it to people. And I kept making movies through high school and then I went to film school and uh, and I was writing and making movies and writing and making movies. When I went to film school, I wanted to go and learn how to be a director and a writer for film, a screenwriter and a director, you know, uh, and, uh, and all kinds of stuff happened in life. And I weaved and went all over the place and worked a million different jobs and couldn't afford school and then go, went back to school and then fell out and then couldn't afford school again and then went back to film school and then couldn't afford film school again. And then uh, I was a, a freelance writer and then I decided to start streaming. And it was the first, I don't even, it's crazy to even think about it, like how it happened that, uh, Four plus years ago, I started streaming and for some reason, uh, people found what I was making compelling and fun. And I, I loved making people laugh. I still love making, it's one of my favorite things to do is to make people laugh. Um, so I've always really valued that, but I value it now more than ever. Uh, I feel like, I feel like it's, uh, I feel like it's more important than ever for people to be able to laugh and have a good time and feel like mirth, you know, sort of just that raw expression of joy together. And um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, but so four years ago, I started this show and it, and it, and people wanted to see it and and that was exciting to me and, and interesting. And, uh, and I've been doing it ever since. I've been grinding at it ever since. And I don't always grind as hard as some people grind, um, I guess. I feel like I grind more than, I feel like I'm giving the Bilbo speech right now. Uh, I don't grind half as hard as two of you. And I grind twice as hard as half of you. 
I don't know, something like that. Um, but uh, the the reality is it's been a grind and it's been a lot of work. Um, and uh, it's it's easy to feel like it could disappear at any moment. And uh, I don't know. It's something I've thought about a lot. It's been on my mind for a long time is this idea that like the, 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 the temporariness of this particular creative pursuit or all creative pursuits. And um, I don't know, uh, I guess watching Twin Peaks made me go, huh, sometimes if you make something good, even if it feels like it might be gone, uh, you can you can work some magic. Things can things can have a lasting power. Even things that even things that struggled, like Twin Peaks season two, really lost its footing and arguably became like at points it's like a a bad show, um, in which is crazy to say because the 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 first season and the early second season is so good. It's hard to believe that like oh god it can get so bad later on. Um, and thankfully, the last episode, the finale, is is really good. But it, the truth is, there's a lot of bad episodes in season two that are just terrible to watch. Um, and uh, I don't know. Um, true, Ian. True, Ian M. It's just, like I said, I don't have anything super profound to say here. I'm just sharing my musings. I'm sharing my thoughts um, that have been in my mind about all this and, and thinking about, like, you never really know about that kind of stuff, but it can happen. And if you make something good that touches people, they will remember it. Because it's easy to believe that people won't. It's easy to believe that uh, you could pour your heart and soul into something and nobody ever sees it and nobody ever recognizes that or, or benefits from it or anything like that. And it has happened. Um, you know, in my life, I have, I have experienced a lot of failure. Um, I have experienced a lot of I mentioned this, um, some of you will probably remember this if you haven't seen my uh, my drama mama about James Summerton, the second one, the squeakquel. Um, if you haven't seen my, my drama mama, I talk about this in a particular segment where um, he, he talks about, oh, you know, like sometimes film projects don't work out. And this is of course to explain his film projects that he never started but took money for. And I got fairly frustrated by that um, because of uh, because I know what it's like to have creative projects fail. I know what it's like to have many projects fail. Um, and there is a difference between a, a failure and, and a, a scam. And also, the simple truth is that a lot of artistic pursuits do fail. Um, you will put yourself out there in the world um, and maybe nobody will bite. That's a real thing that can happen. Sometimes you can make something good, really good, and still nobody will bite. And you don't always know the answer to that. You never know for sure whether it's like you didn't make, whether you made something that wasn't good enough or whatever, or whether you made something that was good, but for whatever reason, it just, it just couldn't breathe. It couldn't get out there and people couldn't see it. And, uh, and it's, it's, it is complicated. Arlo says, if you enjoy streaming, why does being forgotten matter? I enjoy working on my Minecraft build for an hour every day. If I knew the world would end tomorrow, I'd still do it because I enjoy it. Well, I mean, I don't think there's a dichotomy there, right? Um, I started streaming with no viewers for months. I streamed to four people who showed up 
not because I was particularly entertaining, but because they wanted to support me. And I know that they wanted to support me. And I'm not saying they're liars or anything. They weren't. They were supportive, and I appreciate that. Retcon was one of them, by the way. Ret Retcon was one of them. Um, but the reality is that um, not everything is a Minecraft server. Um, it's just not. Uh, um, Minecraft servers are a... Um, are a purely, not purely, but they are a mostly solo engagement. You are making something purely for your own benefit. And um, I don't, I think that some art can be like that, that some art can be like uh, pure, made purely for your own, you're, you're just making something just to have to, to have put something into the world that pleases you. And I respect that a lot. And I think that's great. But there's also a lot of art that is that is designed, it's put out there with the purpose of, of having a social function, you know? Um, a, a, a social function. Um, and streaming is especially that. Streams transform completely. Um, without the presence of an audience. And an example of that, proof of that, is literally right now. Ho! Oh, got meta on ya. You didn't even know. You weren't prepared. You weren't prepared for how I was gonna bring that around. The fact that I was able to read out your comment, answer your feedback, or your, your thoughts in real time and build off of it with my own is that is the social aspect, or even maybe, you know, you could call it, I mean, I think that's just social. Um, you know, uh, it's the social aspect of, of, uh, of, <laughs> of streaming. And there's many art, there's many types of art that, uh, that, ha that require or benefit from that social aspect. LB says, well, I just rewound and heard the Red Bull story. My God, Demon Mama. Yeah, right? I know, I told you, the Red Bull throat is wild. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, there is art that uh, that I think is totally fine to make purely for yourself or for someone else. I think that's totally fine. But uh, I think it, I don't think that that's all art. And I've never found it... Um, I've never found the the sort of adage of like, you know, just just make art for yourself to be fully satisfying. Um, and the reason for that is not because I don't think it's good to do that. I do think it's good to do that. I, I, I think on a base level, um, making art that makes you happy is really, or not necessarily happy, but that makes you feel something, that makes you satisfied is super, super important. But the reality is that like, the process of making art is almost never like a solipsistic experience. There are social elements in so many ways. Um, from the creation of art itself, like right now, um, I have a room, I'm sitting in a room that was in part constructed by myself in part constructed by my partner Fawn, in part constructed by my partner Doe, in part constructed by my my best friend uh, Sadie, um, that, that it has art that was contributed by Hideo Kojima and Jean-Francois Ray, um, it, art, it's, there's so much going on here. There's so many other handprints on all this. I could go on all the, my, 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 my little sister, knit, knit, trans, pride, B. Um, so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to this. And I think it's, at least for me, the social aspect of art has always been very, you know, very interesting to me. And also, I think it's fairly important. It's made overly important in our current era, in the social media era, where everything is a, I don't know, everything is a public statement and everything is 
um, designed to be marketed and brandified. That that aspect, the like, I mean, if I was to go right now, I could add an hour to this little ramble here just by trying to talk about um, YouTube statistics, to talk about viewers and likes and uh, whether the video is going to get out to people. Uh, by the way, you should like and subscribe to the stream. Um, but it's like, you know, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I could, I could add an hour onto, onto this, you know? I'm not going to, because that would be boring. Um, and also because what I was trying to say before my ADHD brain started wandering in a different direction um, was, uh, that the platform of YouTube and the social media sphere puts an over-focus on the number of eyes on everything. And it's just true, but we can't not think about it. Um, or at least I think ignoring it is kind of a silly thing. You kind of have to process it and think about it and do what you can with it. And uh, it's complicated. I don't have all the answers for that. And, uh, but it is, a, it is something that I think about, you know? I do, uh, what's the way, how do I want to put this? If you've never put your stuff out in front of people for them to judge and talk about and reflect on and think about and react to, it's, it is, uh, it's easy to think you wouldn't that you won't care at all, um, but the reality is that it's very hard to not care, especially too, when there is an aspect of, um, when there's an aspect of like being able to put food on the table, you know, or take care of yourself, you know. Um, that also adds a stress level to it, you know. Anyway, that's my ramble about my own feelings about the passage of time and art, um, about how it feels to worry about uh, whether or not when you put something out into the world, if it will just disappear like a puff of smoke in the wind, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, there's a lot of times where it's like, oh, uh, Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you wish things would be forgotten, mistakes you made or whatever. But also there's so many times where it's like, damn, I wish people, I wish, I wish the people who would appreciate what I did here would see it and take joy in it. There's something wonderful about being able to spark joy in another person with what you make. There, I, I find that amazing. And I do think that there's a balance between you know, trying to, trying to chase uh, uh, a faceless audience and make them happy um, and doing things for yourself that makes you happy in the act of creation and also wanting to see real existing people have a good time with something that you made with your hands or that you made with your friends. You know?
because like there are a bunch of you who have contributed to my community in some way or another um, whose names I know where we have some level of a connection and whether or not and and this is where this is going to branch into a conversation about parasociality of course but um it's not like the parasocial social thing is very complicated and the simple reality is that a lot of art that we make now uh uh just kind of veers all over these lines between parasociality and socialization and connection and non-connection and the boundaries can be very hard to draw at times. Um, they can be very hard to figure out. Um, um, and uh, all I'm trying to say is with this particular section is that um, it is possible to lose yourself in trying to make to to, to you expend your energy to get the biggest number possible to get as many people out there in the world reacting positively or reacting at all uh, in some way to something that you put out there that is something that you can do and that you can fall into and I think that it's it can be folly it's it can be the worst folly. To, to fault to find yourself in that position but also I think it's just real that a lot of artists are fueled by and value the the fact that their art can have an impact on other people and uh, and I don't think it's as simple as um, I don't think it's as simple as just you know art is only a thing that you do purely for the uh, joy of the act alone and nothing else. Maybe some art is, and I think that art can be very valuable. Um, but it's complicated. And I said, like I said, I don't really have anything. I don't have a profound conclusion. This is just one of the things that my, th my brain has been going through. And um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for hearing me ramble about that. I need to eat this now cold quesadilla. Anarcho Delphi, uh, this, what is with the stream title? The stream title is that we are saying goodbye to the studio. This is the last stream that will ever be filmed in this studio. Uh, everything's going to be taken down over the next couple of days, and I'm going to be building up a new studio um, that will look very different and no doubt herald in a lot of new things. God damn it, Demon Mama, you gave me a fucking heart attack? Well... I didn't mean to give you a heart attack. Um, perhaps I was being a little too, too cheeky with the title. I don't know how to react to the fact that People are scared that I'm quitting because on one hand, it's very flattering that people would care that I am no longer making something that they're invested in what I make. But on the other hand, why do so many people think I'm going to quit? Also true nuts. Nuts says I never get baited because I read the discord ping. True. So go to the discord, discord.gg forward slash demon mama, and you'll never get baited again. I always put a more di a more full description in my Discord pings because you only have 120 characters for for YouTube titles. I can only put so much. I got to make it I got to make it there. Meme time. No! Eating time.
What is this food? This is a really good quesadilla. I actually ordered fish tacos as well, but unfortunately they didn't arrive. So, oh well. From a local place, yep. Louis Boy says, if you stopped streaming, I would cry. Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to make you cry, but I'm, uh, I'm going to have to stop streaming eventually. I mean, unless I literally die on air, and that is a way of stopping streaming, you know? I, I have to catch up on donos, but I will. I will be catching up on donos momentarily. Dorian the Gray says, I think a lot of people are jumpy because of how many YouTubers have quit this year already. I don't blame them for quitting or retiring. This shit is really hard. Um, and um, I don't think it's possible to do it without fueling a lot of it with your, with your soul. Um, or completely emptying all soul out of it and treating it completely like a job in which you don't you know you are you are just doing the basics you know but even that i don't think is completely possible like mr beast is the number one youtuber on this platform and um in that recent article in that interview he did he talked about how it's been a process of having to like meticulously carve out his own personality out of his own content it sounds to me like it's actually fairly difficult to do that because of how creatively intensive the basic work of YouTube is. Um, pretty mon pretty horrible to read. It was actually extremely depressing to read that article. Please don't end up on a creepy dead YouTuber creator iceberg. Well, I don't want to. Um, I would rather, I don't know. It's hard, okay? Um, It's difficult. Oh, and right now, a lot of channels are seriously suffering on YouTube. It is extremely hard. In fact, I heard from a friend of mine who reads a lot of YouTube news that the last three months have been the lowest, um, like, per capita engagement on YouTube in a really long time. Like, YouTube just generally has been getting less engagement. It's wild. wild um but yeah please don't actually ac accidentally open your to be sorted folder listen my god i'm gonna finish this thing and then we're gonna talk about some other things and then we're gonna do whatever. Yeah, it could be, Niana. It could be. But, um, yeah, YouTube's been, um, YouTube's been rough, um, I mean, hell, our channel certainly felt it. The last month has been the, the last month we've, like the algorithm has completely like shut us down. I have no idea why. I literally have no idea why, but the last month, total shutdown in the algorithm. It's been brutal. Weeberry1 says, hi, haven't tuned in in a while. Are you quitting? No, I'm not. We are just saying goodbye to this studio. This is the last stream from this studio. I'm going to be saying this a lot tonight, so pardon me, but. Thank you, Titan Uranus. Damn, that's awesome, Gayfish. Grandmaster is really hard.
Varnish Eater says, honestly surprised people don't automatically see titles like that as clickbait. It was pretty obvious to me. I think it's weird. When, when, when I think of clickbait, people have, people are very broad with the term clickbait these days. When I, when I see clickbait, I think of things like, you won't believe what happened when this person picked up a gun, dot, dot, dot. Um, I think of things that are like, they're in intentionally super, super vague and yeah, and like misleading, you know? Like people seem to get, I mean, I understand it because like there is, you know, there's an attention economy on YouTube. Whatever. Whatever. Those Sony MD headphones are classic. We love to see it. I love these headphones. They have served me so, so well. Actually, I have to replace the pads. You can actually see the, uh, the pads have started to break down a little bit. So I'm going to be getting new one, new pads soon. But these headphones have served me so well. The audio quality is incredible. I love them so much. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, when I think of like, I mean, I don't know. I, I've definitely done clickbait like, or I don't know if I don't, I don't even know if I want to call it clickbait. I have done, I have, I have, I have juiced up titles. Let's call it that. We'll call it juicing up because I don't, I've never done like a clickbait title. Actually, have I? Yes, I did a clickbait title, which was the drama video, which was intentional. That's clickbait. That was clickbait. Me saying, it's finally time to talk about the drama. And then I only talk about my frustrations about drama generally. Oh, the Arsler stream. That's another one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was another one. That was definitely clickbait. But something like this, it's like, yes. Am I being a little dramatic? It's time to say goodbye. That is dramatic. But we're saying goodbye to the studio that I've been streaming from for half my career. I think it's fine to be dramatic when we're, when I'm, when I'm, you're never going to see the studio ever again. There are like hundreds of you who have watched countless hours in this studio and we're saying goodbye to it. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. Travel safe, Varna Cedar. How different will the new studio be? A lot. A lot different. Oh, good. I didn't spill any. That would have been so embarrassing. Fruitcast, you're going to love it. It's going to have moody lighting. I'm going to be changing up the style of the focus. There's going to be a million more things to latch on to. That's fair, quick net. I'm not saying that people are totally wrong. I'm almost done. I've been eating this really slowly because I've been chatting with everybody. Look at that. Look at the banter. The magic. Will the piano be in the new setup? Yes. And depending on whether I can make it work, we might even have a piano cam that will allow me to switch over so that we have a different angle for when I want to play piano. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it work, but I'm going to try. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to try. I don't know if I'll be able to make it technically work, but I hope so.
That's fair, Liza Bay. I wasn't really trying to make anybody worried, but I certainly want people to come in here and care about the studio that we're never going to see again. Can you get a smart board for the background? I don't want to do a smart board background. Um, I've thought about green screens and stuff like that. Um, and in fact, I have an idea for a, a movable green screen. The thing is, I really like real sets. Um, a lot of streamers do green screens and I think they look tacky and terrible. No hate, but I just, I don't like green screens. I understand if you're like streaming from a dorm and you don't want like a shitty dorm background, I get it. So I'm not, I'm not being a hater, but I just, I don't like green screens. I like real sets that are actually there that I can reach into the background and touch. This room is cute, but I'm sure the new place will be nice. The new studio, it's, I don't, I will not turn my camera on until I'm satisfied with it. So, guess you all, all of you, that means everyone here who's excited for me to be back, I need all of you to, to manifest as much psychic energy, send it through the dream world to me so that I can, uh, manifest it into the best looking studio set that you've ever seen in your goddamn life. I'm, I gotta upstage, okay? Are you still planning on having a camera in the kitchen for some cooking segments? That's a future thing. I can't do it here at this current location. The The kitchen that we have is not conducive to um, being able to do that. But that will be a future thing. So maybe a year or two down the line, maybe, maybe or so. I don't know. Thank you. I'm receiving your energy. True, Lonzetta. I am so close to being done with this quesadilla. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. No, IRL Cooking Mama will happen eventually. It's just, I could make a video. It's just the problem is our kitchen does, our kitchen has an, an absolutely impossible sound, sound setup. It would be, it would be brutal to try and get sound in that goddamn kitchen. It's already hard. It's already hard, but all right, give me one second, okay? I have to use the restroom. So I'm gonna play for you guys the best song ever. Don't go anywhere, because we're gonna hit you with the bathroom. 